Hey guys, welcome to the video. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my basement. In this video, I'm going to be going over the geometry that I'm designing for the front A-arm suspension on my Baja Bug. So let me start by showing you what I'm starting with here. This is a printout from the Bentec software and it is a like a front profile of the connection points on the chassis that I'm building. These two points right here are the inch and a half and inch and a half that are butted together right here. I drew up this inch and a half tube up at the top, 10 inches up. This tube is not actually on my chassis yet. This is just projected. So if I need to move this around some, I can. But this point is set. So is this point, which I just have this an inch and a quarter off of the tubes because that's what I did on my first chassis. That works out really well. So I know that all of this is going to be just like this. Then if we come over here, what I've done is essentially kind of the same thing that I did over there. This is an actual one-to-one -one full size printout of my spindle. And I've got these pivot points in the exact same location that the actual pivot points are gonna be on the spindle. Then I've got this piece on here. And what this piece does is it represents the tire. So this just gives me a reference of this point down here is where the bottom of the tire would be. So this would be the contact point. Um, it just gives me a reference of where, what's gonna happen to the contact point as the suspension moves around. And then this distance of the lower control arm is already set. So what I did is, looking at my existing chassis, I could tell, I could measure the track width, and I decided I wanted this one a couple inches wider. So I just took that dimension from the center line of the chassis to the tire, the center line of the tire or the center line of the wheel. And I just made this long enough to get that wheelbase that I needed, that, that track width that I needed. So that set the length of my lower control arm. So this is a constant. This pivot point here is a constant because I know that I want to keep this and I want to work with this. This is a constant and this is a constant because these things already exist and I've already kind of, for the most part, proved this out with the suspension that's on my bug now. So what I need to do is figure out what is going to happen to my suspension as it goes from full compression to full droop. Um, and it's not so much that I need to figure out what's going to happen to it, is I need to figure out what I want to happen to it because the distance of my upper control arm and where I put the pivot point up here is going to affect what happens to that as it goes through its range of motion. In addition to that, another thing that I need to keep in mind is this is all going to also play in effect with my steering box. My steering is going to be right around here, roughly. I have a little point of where it kind of will end up right now. So I'm going to try and work with that to a certain degree. However, that's not life and death because once I get this geometry ironed out and this stuff actually built on the chassis, I can actually make modifications to my steering box and I can, I can move this some um, in order to get the geometry correct. Because what's gonna happen is as this suspension travels up and down and things change a little bit, it's also going to change the length of my steering arm, which would give you what they call bump steer so that um, as the suspension goes through its motions, the wheels would kind of tow in, tow out, and whatnot. So knowing that I'm 10 and an inches from here to there, and that this is raked back 10 degrees, we went over that in the video about the spindle design. Theoretically, if I brought this back and I kept these 10 and a quarter inches and raked back at a 10 degree, that would be what I call perfect geometry. And then as the suspension traveled up and down through its motion, the spindle face, if I had this set at, let's see, let's say zero degrees camber, so it was straight up and down, as this went through its motion, that would stay zero. That's what my rear suspension is going to be set up as. And I'm going to get this pretty close to it because I don't want to have a lot of camber change, absolutely none on the rear. But there are a couple things that we can do to make it a little bit better in the front. So I did come up with a point that makes the upper control arm a little bit shorter. 
so I get a little bit of camber change as it's going through the motion. So if you look over here, what I've done with the tire contact point is I've created an arc so that I can visualize as it's going through its motion what the tire will be doing. And you can see this is a line that just goes perfectly straight up and down. And you can see that the tire contact point, you know, works its way in at full droop around mid stride. It's, it's essentially right in the middle. It pushes itself out a little bit, but then it comes back in. And then at full compression, it starts to work itself in. Because as, as A-arm suspension goes through its motion, you know, it gets wide, then it comes in, goes wide, and it comes back in. That's not a huge problem, but as you get drastic suspension, like when your vehicle lands, the first thing that those tires are going to do is push themselves out as they uh, compress. You can alleviate that a little bit by making your geometry so that as it droops, your camber will pull in some and it'll have a tendency to lean your tire out. What some people do is they actually set up their geometry to get the tire so that it tracks a little bit straighter. So when your suspension would come down, your camber would pull in and it would push the bottom of your tire out and it would follow a straighter line. The same thing would happen at the top. As it would start to compress, the camber would lean in and it would cause your tire contact point to follow more of this straight line. Some people design their suspension that way so that there's not much of a contact point change. And you got to remember that when you're setting this up, there's a multitude of different things that you can do and you have to just go down the path that you think is going to work best for you. There's really not a right or a wrong way to do it because it depends on the terrain, your driving style, how much suspension travel you're going to have. There's, you know, when you're setting up suspension, pretty much everything that you do is a give and take for something else. So let me give you a little bit of an example. The way that I have it set up right now, this is the way I have it set right here is the way I'm going to do it. This is my ride height. This is my ride height. Right now there's zero camber. At full compression, it cambers in a little tiny bit, but barely any at all. The reason that I did that is on my bug, it's not really, really wide. I don't want my tires cambering in a lot at the top because they'll, they're going to run into my fenders on my one piece front end. So for the most part, I just want them going straight up and down. That's how I have it set it up at full compression. Then at full droop, you might be able to see it cambers in about three degrees. And I'm doing that because I'm trying to find a happy median between this arc here and the straight line. Because at full droop, it will be helpful if I'm flared out a little bit, because again, that gives you a little bit of stability. However, the problem with that, you're going to have steering linkage coming down through here. And as this drops, with the way my ball joints are set up, these can basically go as far as they want. That's, there's not going to be any limitation there. But my steering, the himes are turned the other way. So they are actually going to reach a maximum point. That's what's going to limit my droop is how far my steering ball joints can go before they bind in there. Now, if I have it so that as my suspension droops, the camber leans in and in, that's going to make that problem of the angle of my lower steering link get worse and worse. So again, I'm, tr I'm finding like a happy median between having it camber in a little bit, but not too much because the more it cambers in, it would cause my suspension to droop less and less and less because as soon as I hit the maximum angle for my steering, that's it. I can't go any farther than that. So if I had radical camber change, I would probably have to stop about right there. But if I have it set up kind of like I do, and it's not very radical with the change in camber, I should be able to get a little bit more droop. Let me make some changes here so that you can kind of get an example of how if you make some changes, it'll drastically affect things over here. When I printed this out in Bentec, I just put all sorts of different points in here. And then you can see that I even ended up using 
a bunch that aren't even there, um, but this kind of gave me some reference as to where I'm going. The one that's circled right there is the one that I'm gonna go with, but let's take this one out here. Now what I've done is I've changed my pivot point from there to there. I need to adjust it on the spindle end also, but that's gonna make the upper control arm much shorter. So what I've done now is I've, by about three and a half inches, I've shortened up the length of the upper control arm. And now you'll see, whereas before this line, the contact point was a little bit to the inside of this arc, you see now it's on the outside. There's more camber on the spindle here. Um, and, and that's actually pretty good. I, I would actually be quite happy with that. But I just know with my chassis and my one piece front end, this will cause serious problems with this tire crashing into the fenders on my one piece front end. But then at full droop, you can see how drastically, especially towards the bottom, that comes in and collapses. So with this setup, there, I would never be able to get this much droop because there's no way my steering linkage would get down in there. It's just no chance. So this one would probably have to, you know, bottom out probably somewhere around here because that angle of my steering linkage, because the steering linkage is going to be all the way up here, would get real severe. Now, on the other end of that spectrum, you can see that the contact point does not deviate as far from this line. And stability-wise, and like just for off-road performance-wise, that's actually pretty good. So there's there's some real benefits to this setup, but the fact that it cambers in so much at full droop is just, that would, that would really limit my droop. Um, and I do like to get as much suspension travel as possible. So guys, that's it for this video. I've got everything put back to the points that I'm gonna use for my build. I just wanted to do a little video showing kind of how I came up with what I'm gonna do. Hopefully it's helping you with your builds a little bit. And hopefully I see you on the next video. Take care.